But uh, I would like to ask you a couple questions, both of you, actually, well, about uh, bullying. But first of all, uh, did you have a question about? Um, that's all right. We can edit this on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We're not. We're not gonna gonna question. Be edited, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. I do have a question. Then Great. I have a question about. You said that when this happened and you got hit by this guy, that there were film crews there because you were in production for a show. Yes. So all of this is caught on video, or you're saying that nobody. Has... No, it's it's all on mic on video. I was mic. They had the boom mic, <laughs> and. Um, so the they audio was captured. Audio and the film. Well, here's the bad part. This is where now it's going to get big, and I don't know if and when I may have to take it to the tabloids to get something going, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I'm fighting NBC, CNBC. They're in my lawsuit. They own all this. Mm -hmm. They, CNBC is, they're covering it up. They're saying there's no Stacy. Stacy is the executive producer. Wow. They're trying to cover her up. Wait, they don't know I got her on film because I was filming my son Bobby, MTV superstar Bobby. They were filming him, and I'm filming him in front of the fleet of limos. And she goes, "Limo Bob, <clears throat> there'll be no audio." I go, "Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Stacy. Don't worry, dear. It won't happen again." As I'm filming her, mm -hmm. and I go, "Click." So they are covering up that there is no search of Stacey. Mm -hmm. Elise, who loves my son, who is another executive associate producer, mm -hmm. is covered up. She's now not speaking. They subpoenaed all the footage. The only footage they got in there, they say, is when I walked in and he goes, I'm going to kill you, motherfucker. You know what I mean? And I go, what? Come on. And then he was serious. I go, no, you ain't killing no one. And I go... No, I go, you ain't killing no one because he swore at me, so I got mad at him. I go, you ain't killing no one, and that's her. Mm -hmm. And then I take my jacket off, and you see the outrage on my face. Because by this time, the guy wants to fight me. Wait, I love everyone. I don't have an enemy. But you're wrecking my party, dude. You're threatening to kill me in front of all these people and acting like you need. So what do they show? Mm -hmm. They show the footage of me. You ain't killing no one. So, so did he get taken I'll out? Rip. Did he get taken out of the uh, like the scene? No. No. This is where we found out. Thank God, the first guy I sued, Ty Bobbitt, with Bobbitt Media Productions, who owns LCT Limousine Show for Magazine, who owns the show that put it on in Atlantic City, Caesar's Palace, New Jersey, on the pier at Ocean One Restaurant. He is my friend for all these years. He gave me a quarter million. I said, you could go. He had a million dollar insurance. Says, I can take your million. Yeah. I want a million from all these defendants. So he gave you, like, whatever his insurance. He's like, I've got insurance. Here's some money. No, his insurance, his insurance guys play with me. Remember now, this is 10 years I'm down. I ain't worked or nothing. I spent all my millions and everything. I got these last few Mohicans, the jet limo, the 55-foot Phantom, these funky stuff, right? And they're all got cobwebs on them from 10 years. So... Mm -hmm. You're, you're just, currently trying to sell your fleet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's why I sent it to you. Yeah. If you. Hey, anyone out there, if you know anyone who wants to buy a fleet of unbelievable limousines, that's right. <laughs> world famous ones, $1 million for eight of the world's longest, most exotic limos. And if you got an extra million, I got the Boeing 727 Jet Limo. Come on, don't worry, it's got shag carpet, a little bit of paneling and everything. We'll take you back to the 70s. <laughs> if you don't like that theme, do the remodeling job, or we'll do the remodeling job for you at a beautiful cost. Shop around, get the best price, we'll be in any price of town. So that's what we want to do for you. And don't forget, I'm thinking, as I'm working with my friends right here, I, and I'm going to say it first time out loud, I'm thinking, you know what, Don? Maybe I'll just give you guys $100,000, 10%. Let's sell the book rights for a million right now, the movie <laughs> rights for a million right now. They can get my fleet for a million. The jet for a million, that's four million dollars. We gotta make it five million. Mm -hmm. I'll sell half, forty-nine percent of the rights to limobob.com. Every dollar from that day forward that Limo Bob brings in, you get half. Do you believe in me? We're starting today. No money 
right here. A lot of gold. <laughs> Beautiful friends. <laughs> Lovely ladies. Here we come, baby. Here we go. <laughs> All right, enough of me. Back to me now. Let's go. <laughs> you are so amazing. I'm a little shy. You're, yeah, you're, you've got this. I mean, you are such a star. Yeah, huh? right. you're going to have you're going to have a lot of fans like the young, you know, the young generation, you know, that looks up to models, you Thank know, and you. The strong people. That's what I'm hoping for. Yes. So I think this is gonna be perfect. So what do you think, Don? What's what's gonna what's the future of this? The show, the new show, the new you know platform. I'm, it's exciting. Okay, I'm just gonna do my part to uh, to introduce your story to um, to folks who yeah. wants to tune in. And I love these people. They believed in me, like I'm saying. You are now gonna believe in me. You're gonna believe in us. And we're <clears throat> when we talk about at the very bottom, we got it. We're starting here. Whoever is involved in this phenomenon is coming up with us. So I just had a brilliant idea. How about um, the limo Bob skydive? Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> that is amazing. So have, it's you, real, have, have, out. have you ever jumped out of an airplane? <laughs> I was never. Nah. I'm having too much fun. I think there was too much fun. Yeah, me, me and Lisa, like, she's, she's going to come with me at the drop zone, and we're going to jump out of our plane. Uh, would, would you like, I would like to invite you to do, to do I would like to ride on a plane and watch all you guys jump. <laughs> you know what would be fun? strapped in six different ways. <laughs> you know what would be great? Would you be down for this? Because I, Lisa and I, I I'll, I'll start here and with that, the air tube. Is that what it's called? Oh, yeah. so the indoor skydiving. Yeah, the the indoor, indoor skydiving. skydiving. So they just blow wind up on you, kind of? Um, you're floating. But Where guess what? I can't. Why? Well, because your injuries. I, well, yeah, because of my injuries, and and I don't want to say my injuries are too bad, because um, I didn't tell you I'm running for presidency in 2024. <laughs> That's right, baby. If Limo Bob gets big. We're gonna have all the victims of the bully world are gonna vote for me. <laughs> you know, bullies are also other countries and dictators. Oh, well, right. of course, yeah. yeah. Right? right? Yeah. So we're talking about bullies from knee high to knee. Well, that's Can't what get... that's, that's what, what sparked her, yeah. and she and she yeah. told you because merge, but because this this tragedy happened all around the world. You yeah. know, the tragedy yeah. of nine eleven, mm -hmm. and so she got so upset, kind of like when you got punched. Yeah. We all got punched that day, yeah. but her. Just like you're rising up, she just like she rose up and she's like, I, I'm I'm not gonna ever forget this. And she doesn't want anybody else to forget it. I love it. About That's it. right. And we should not forget. It. Just like you're you don't forget the guy who, you know, uh, the, Sergio. I uh, Sergio, Sergio Sanchez, you bully. He lives in New York, New York. Check him out. Hey, another thing I gotta say, and this is just off the off the you know. Wait, I just thought about this the other day. Are you kidding me? All right, now here, government, please. I don't, I don't care to change the law. Why do you put my name, the victim, my address, and <laughs> and then you subpoena this stinking bully and let him know where I live? I know. <laughs> They do that. We he always, wants you know, to kill me. You know what's funny? Because I've heard that before. So when you have a, um, if you have a charge, like, like somebody like hit you, just like, like he did, did, you know, and to subpoena them, he gets the, the, the bully would get the same subpoena, but with his physical address. Yeah. So he can yeah. come, uh, and come take me out. He, he could. Yeah. And so there's like really no protection there. No way. It's so ridiculous. You never should give the freaking. You know, you leave it as a mailing address or something. If they, you don't, they don't need an address. Can it be Bob Strouser from Chicago or Tampa and leave yeah. it there? Or a PO box or something. Right. Yeah. You know anything? You don't give people, yeah. especially we're talking criminal courts here. Right. Yeah. You know, you don't give that bully that right to go ahead and and have my address. You know, I'm going to tell you the worst part about this whole story. You're going to die when you hear this part. Are you ready? Do you know? That they stinking, yeah, they wait. I'm in the court thrice. This bully's like, I'm going to so he's losing. So you saw him in the I'm court. winning. Oh, yeah. Oh, he wanted to fight me in the court. What? Then he wanted, <laughs> oh, yeah. That empty dude, he had his hitman outside. The police had to take yeah, me to my car. So this guy has like, anger issues. Oh, yeah. No, he's got a half a dozen dudes. Issues. He yeah. does. But you want to know what he does? You're not going to believe this. So he's in the courts after he's trying to fight me in court and everything. 
and even in front of litigators, his 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 lawyer comes up and say, "Your Honor, we wish to file charges against Mr. Strauser." Again, like you know what's funny is because know about mine. You want to be charged with it? But the same thing he's charged with, battery. Oh, they want to. You know why? He goes. He punched me in the stomach six months later. The judge laughs. She goes, "Wait a minute." Now I'm thinking you turned red. Right. I didn't punch you in the stomach. Should have told him the truth. Right. When you got in my face, you know I mean when I slammed you and everything. But no, you don't want to talk about it. So you know what he does? He goes ahead and he gets a charge on me. Of uh, battery against him and he lies. But he so can do it. Happens. Wait, I had to get a lawyer for five thousand dollars to defend myself so from happens. the bully. I so never touched happens. him. Yeah, he never touched him. And so, see, I, I slammed him. Nothing that, that, asleep, did he it. have evidence like you've got all these medical bills? No. No, he had no great, no problem. Yeah. Well, you know, they caught him after <clears throat> I dropped him, put him to sleep. Then the people go, Little Bob, get off him, get off him. And then I got off because well, you could tell when he went to sleep, he went limp. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. so I got off him. Then some guy got on him, tried to slap in his face. They're trying to wake him up now. And the guy got up and, uh, and he, he, he shook it off. He's like shaking it off and looking at me, getting on his knees. And I'm like standing like this, excuse me. And I'm like, I'm seeing fours from the punch. Not dual vision. I got four of his face. Wow. His body's four times in me. And I'm looking like this and I'm bleeding <laughs> from here to here. He punched me. Which, by the way. With my ugly sunglasses on. Oh, wow, well, yeah. And I'm going to show uh, some pics of your, your eyes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, please yeah. do. You'll see to what serious extent mm -hmm. that he shattered all the oil of my, the eye. <clears throat> but they wanted to sew my eyes shut, the doctor. And he said, we're going to cut below it. And we're going to do re surgery. We're going to re or fix your orbital. And I said, you can't. Because this guy punched me and I had a little bit of a heart condition. Because that guy fell in a black mold down here. You know, it was, I just went a week <laughs> in the hospital. Yeah. I just haven't had the best time. But I'm like, mold? That's kind of silly. We get that at a shop for a cold. Not down here, black bowl, take your ass out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kill you. So, <laughs> by the way, um, and this is kind of like off the record camera or whatever, we can edit this out. But, um, yeah, because he sent me uh, like some content, so I'll need your help in your body. Okay. okay? And she knows it. Oh, yeah. So, no, yes. that's what I'm So, yeah, Lisa, so. Uh, maybe I'll say this on camera, by the way. Lisa, by the way, is. Uh, is participates uh, a lot, like not in the music production, but boy, she gets uh, the licensing. Uh, she gets, uh, she does like the the video editing, not like not like uh, they do with uh, Final Cut, right. but we have basic editors just that helps out with uh, promotion here, More with like downtime the admin productions. More like the creative side. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, yeah. Um, I'm not and comfortable so. in front of the camera. <laughs> you look beautiful. That's where you should be. But um, you ladies are lovely. So, what uh, questions? Uh, what other questions do you girls have for LB? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, which, by the way, I should say this. Uh, I love hanging out with you because this boy. I mean, I know it's uncalled for because I can see it in your heart. I can see it in your eyes that you don't have uh, an ounce of hatred towards anyone, mm -hmm. and I don't think that you ever have. No, you know, I love and, everyone. Uh, I really yeah. do. I'm, so, I'm a, I would go to church every Sunday. I never miss church. I'm a good Roman Catholic little Christian boy. That <clears throat> Do you know Don King left the shaving bag with more golden diamonds than me from Muhammad Ali? Richard Pryor wow. inscribed to him with wow. diamonds. Yeah. I actually took a picture of it. If you go to limobob.com, look under <laughs> celebrities, you'll see it spread it out on my dining room table. I didn't want him to blame me. For stealing it, so I wanted to take a picture before I brought it back. I <laughs> called him up. I go, "You left the bag." He goes, "What do you want?" And he hated me. He, he just hated white Don people. King? Don, Don King hated white people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Don yeah. King would hear you. What do you yeah. want? Well, I'm out. And I go, "Oh, you left the bag in the bag." When I brought it back to the Ritz Carlton, he opened up the double doors with his PJs on, and he reached for it. He grabs the shaved bag out of my hand, rips it. Damn. And slams the double doors. And, and I went forward and wow. he almost broke my nose. So ungrateful, huh? Not even thank you. Wow. You believe so, a million dollars in gold or this, better. This actually reminds me of a question that I wanted to ask you because I can just show uh, pics of... Um, of tell, tell me about some of the, the gifts that like, celebrities have given you. I know <laughs> Michael, Mike, Ty, uh, Michael Tyson. Mike Tyson yeah. gave you 
a uh, this fur coat, right? Full length. Yeah, wow. and Full uh, length it's, fur a coat. Pretty, it's a pretty peppin' yeah. looking coat. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I wear it, it's like awesome. Well, he wears it down in Keyworm, too. So how did you acquire this stuff? Like, start with the... Uh, start well, with the, the furry coat. told me to take off my leather. I had a beautiful long leather, soft long leather. So his limo we, taken, we're walking through O'Hare. Let's, let's start from like the, the beginning of this, this story. So you drove my car? <clears throat> yeah, well, the reason why I got Mike Tyson, getting back to doing a good deed, everyone do a good deed, I don't care what you do, do a good deed. I used to empty out of the literature schools, like I told you, to look what I did here. I'm watching TV, Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy will go by. I got through driving those people, having a ball. I'm all over TV doing a good deed. I blew up from it, but two weeks later, I'm watching TV again. Holy Angels Church burnt down in Chicago. It's on the south side of Chicago, you know, brother's neighborhood. <clears throat> and I felt really bad for the, 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 you know, Father Clemens. So I called up, I go, Father Clemens, what can I do for you? I'm so sorry. I says, can I donate my limos to you? You can wrap them off or keep the money and we rebuild the church together. Let me help you out. He goes, oh, that's very kind. He goes, can you pick up my friends on the way? I says, sure. He goes, oh, you stop and pick them up on the way in. First one is Don Johnson, Philip Michael Thomas. Oh, I wow. pick them up, they come off with their jet. I'm like, whoa, he got the cool Miami place. He got some cool friends, man. Next thing he goes, Mom, could you go back to the airport, Bob, please? One more time for a couple more friends. I'm like, sure, Father Clemens, I like your friends. Right? <laughs> I go, man, yeah, you can do it. Who comes on the plane, Mike Tyson, Don King? Wow. So Mike Tyson and Don King come walking out of the plane. Was this like the biggest church in Chicago or something? Or what? No, it was just a brother's church, but I'm such a, you know, not a holy roller. I, I love God and I want to help and, and it's, you know, Catholic Church burned down. Yeah. And it was on the south side. And I don't care, the brothers, they run a lot of money. In fact, all the gangster brothers ride around machine guns. Believe it or not, some of the, some of the guys back in the day. I some of the bling this. came from them, right? Yeah, bling came yeah. from them. Okay. And they told me, don't worry. You think I, you see the machine guns? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so uh, I worry Mike, about the so Mike Tyson and Don King come rolling out of the plane, and how, how did you end up with uh, Mike Tyson's fur coat? He wanted to give me a gift. <laughs> so, for doing what you did? Yeah. Yeah, and so he loved uh, what me. a sweet gift. Well, I had the only kid <laughs> like, in the world that's got a tr eight wheels and it got his hot tub. It's the eight wheel The Cadillac. world's longest Cadillac. Oh wow! He had to have it. He had to have it. Yeah. Okay. So I had. Do you have a tissue in there? Tissue. Uh, Anybody yeah, have a tissue? I got a tissue. Thank you. Um, yeah, but knowing that all the stars just yeah. give me pieces, and you know what I mean? <laughs> like his tips. You know, the tips. Yeah. yeah. I just got this for bodyguard the guy. This one. Mm. I just bodyguard him. Uh, actually, last last year, he gave me this. I bodyguard a thousand bucks, which is nothing. You know, the guy that he, he bought, I mean, it's a very expensive for a watch, mm -hmm. but for it was a nice gift. He walks in, he buys a $1,000 thing, and he gives it to me. I'm like, oh, you're giving me that? He goes, yeah. I go, why? He's your nice guy. I'm like, oh, dude. I said, I'm not going to take it. He goes, yeah, you are. He goes, you're going to pick out the, the yeah. one you want. He goes, I'm going to pick it out. That's what he said, anyway. <laughs> So was Don King probably the rudest person you've ever driven? Well, or, or? there's one other guy. And that was rude? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his name is um, Frank Sinatra Jr. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. Jr.? Yes. I can see that. Uh, can you see that? Uh, I get to his room. Oh, I had so many suitcases, like 15. I was dying. I'm dying. Crawling up and going up to the elevator. So the you're, you're hauling all the suitcases. I got the limo. I'm hauling the suitcases. <laughs> He's performing at some little nightclub. And I get all this stuff up, and I get to the last one. I'm soaking wet. I go, thank you, Mr. Sinatra. I said, I'll be on my way. He goes, get the fuck out of here. And he, he, he crumbled up a $5 bill. Oh, and rude. Threw, it oh, my, no. threw it at my forehead. Wow, that is so wow. rude. That is get rude. the fuck out of here. Was he intoxicated? No, it was in broad daylight, man. It's 12 noon, just pick him up at the airport. Could still be oh, intoxicated. Wow. No yeah. yeah. He just he wanted to show. So, yeah, so the funny thing was, he called back <clears throat> to get back to the airport, and we nicely told him we're not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know who I am. My wow. dad, oh, I got to tell my, we don't care. Who <laughs> we don't. Yeah, yeah, we don't care. I didn't know what to do. You're rude, yeah. you're rude. I, didn't so, know how to, I didn't know how to react to it. I'm like, just like Don King, I just gave you a couple million dollars in gold bag. There ain't a driver in the world that would have done that, Don. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, it's not mine. I know he's missing it. 
No. Either. Did not even know you were missing it. Yeah. Someone dropped a $100 bill out of their pocket. Hey! Pick it up. I just give it to them. Mm -hmm. Can I use the $100 bill? Hell yeah. So anyone use the $100 bill. But it's not mine. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know what happens 20 years later after I gave Don King that gold back? Ladies and gentlemen, we're here live at Limo Bob. Uh, Limo Bob's in the studio here in Chicago, WLA Chicago. Hey, tell us a story, Bob. I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> he goes, listeners, I know you can't see if you're on a radio show. But let me tell you, what this man gave back a million dollars of the gold to Donnie King, which he didn't have to, but he did, because that's the kind of man he is. And I want to tell you right now, this man is sitting next to me with over a million dollars worth of gold on 33 pounds of gold and diamonds. He's been blessed. Yeah. What comes yeah, around, goes around. Goes around. Goes around. Ah. Isn't that a beautiful yeah. shot? Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Lisa cool. and I, the other night, we actually watched the entire film, this award-winning film that yes. you were in called Generation, Generation Wealth. Wealth. We mm -hmm. rented it. Mm -hmm. We sat here and watched it, and uh, you were great in the film. Yeah. So how did you come across this filmmaker? Well, she covered... <clears throat> my son Bobby J was on, he's 28 now, and he's, he's 28 June, July, and he was on MTV Super Sweet 16. Your, your son was? Yeah. That's right. So do they you, do you know what the Super Sweet 16 is? I haven't seen it. It's a, it's a reality show on MTV where what they do is uh, these kids, they turn 16 years old. And the parents just spoil them with whatever they want They're for the this, this big party. Way over the top like, parties. Way yeah. over the top parties. And MTV, uh, the crew would go in there and film uh, these kids yeah. with their sweet 16. And, and some of them, yeah. you know, some of them are... Most uh, of them are brats. Yeah. Most, most of some of them are brats. Yeah. Some of them have attitudes and things like that. But it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. Uh, and and they, so, were like, they were like the biggest thing out there. Well... Bobby's was so good that P. Diddy had to put his son in there. So yeah. it was Dynamite. I think that was a compliment. He's got a, P. Diddy, Diddy put his son on the show, right? Show. <laughs> Your son. Like, Bobby Wood. Bobby Wood. Bobby Wood. Right. Bobby right. Wood. Yeah. yeah. That's his son. Now, and, see, you saw that, the preview of that. Now, what you got to see <clears throat> is if you get a chance to go to YouTube, you'll see there's a limo promo. That's what the TV show wanted us to make. That's what Johnny to be Bob Jones. He's a producer. Yeah, the he's, one Jones. Guy. he's the one. He came from Limo Bob on True TV. Yeah, he brought me there. Okay. So him, I love this guy, and I told him wherever I go, I'm bringing you with. You know, like I say, you know, he's working now doing a catfish, all that stuff, and he does. The all show the catfish. Or yeah. catfish that's show. a great show. I that's his show. Her and her daughter. Yeah, yeah wait, that. that's his show. You know, the yeah. black guy in there. That's yeah. nice guy Neil. He's on my show. And so nice your wife was uh, in Beverly Hills. Yeah, uh, my wife was a star of Brides of Beverly Hills. Brides of Beverly Hills, that's right. And then my son was a star of MTV Super Sweet 16. Oh, and then I was a star of my own show, which was going to be called Limo, until they said, no, this guy's a character. So you better call it Limo would you Bible. say reality TV kind of runs in the family? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I know. It's like when, when Kim Basinger stole my first Empire in the late 80s, her and her brother, because they scammed me out of my whole company. Current Affair was filming me to go, Limo Bob, we're reenacting, you know, they're reenacting Kim being on the hood and she all this stuff. She stole your show. Stole my, my, so my company. I mean, stole your company. Yeah, 10% down. Basinger. Kim Basinger and her brother, Mick. Huh. Yeah, and he stole my, <laughs> they stole the thing, but uh, Current Affair goes, hey, would you say you're one of the first guys that got screwed by Kim Basinger and didn't enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say screwed. You know, he didn't say it was the other word, but. <laughs> so, uh, what what other questions you ladies have for a little bit? So about? what is the what is the future? What do you, what do you on this new show, new podcast? How how far do you want to take it? What what is the plan? You know, <clears throat> we're starting from the bottom. I'm hoping we touch people with by the grace of God that gives us the power through your show and and my friends here with you know downtime productions and you know our cast members here that are gonna roll with us. What I just want to do is just get the message out. You know, being a bully is not all right. It's not all right. You're it's right. not all right. Why did you, you know, why did my, you know, I don't ask God why did me. I say, God, what's my new mission? And then I came up with that idea of no more bullies.club in that site. 
Yeah. And, and and which, by the way, just people to, can be bullied at any age. It's not any just like, any you age. Know, That's right. Any amount little, of money or not. Yeah, money, Country, no money right. nothing. Saddam Hussein. Right. All these kids, you know. Yeah. Did you ever experience uh, bullying? Up, I mean, when you were growing, <laughs> growing up, growing up, and, yeah. all, growing up and all the way to adulthood. Yes. Even yes. even as an academic, I'm a scholar. And there's still a lot of bullying oh, that, that's going on. Yes, yeah. yes, that's and true. And even trying to get your degree, I'm imagining yeah. with uh, yeah. And yeah. You could, with your beautiful the girl trying to maybe, maybe I don't yeah. know. That's what and I feel about yeah. the younger people, though, is because they are bringing it more to talk about it. Like in schools, there's anti-bullying campaigns. Where when we were kids, we'd say anything, and I especially know boys. Boys would never say anything about being bullied mm -hmm. by other boys, and I do believe boys are probably bullied worse than even girls are. Especially young people. Well, no, it's, it's a tough thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a yeah. tough thing in, 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 the, in, in the hood where I went yeah. to school. Where I went, I was, we were the white kids that were bossed. And I'm not prejudiced. My James Cotton, his dad is a world card. The world famous James <laughs> Cotton band. He's the world. I know you're not prejudiced because I know you've got. Like, yeah, he ran my show in 27 so years. I, yeah. Nobody's prejudiced. Right. Yes. And, you know. But I can tell you that. Um, so you were bust. I was bust in at a high school a, uh, to a black, black school. Yes. Okay. okay. And across the street it was all Mexican. So <clears throat> it was that was when they had the race riots. But right after the Chicago riots, that's yeah. when the Black Panthers and the Black Peach so Rangers, the Black Gangs, were throwing white people off the fourth floor gymnasium out of Argo. Oh, wow. So I know what bullying is. The reverse, you know, people say, hey, you know, busing and discrimination, you know, when I see my black friends, they look over, they go, you, you ain't telling Bob nothing, you know, he's been through the shit just like yeah. anyone else, and he's white, you, you were know? the minority. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and they'll also pick on whoever's the biggest limo in town, the biggest game in town, okay, I'm going to give you 12 counts the city of Chicago for running a limousine company out of the city without having a license. Oh, Really? I would get on TV because they bring seven TV and everyone up to my office. I go, not to be smart, but but here we go. Section 304, 502, a million dollar coverage. I have five million dollar coverage. I get section 305. The commissioner of Chicago got fired. I told her what her stuff was. They put me on the news. I go, I know all the laws. And I'm not going to ride around with a 100 foot limo with bad plates. Hello? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got to be totally on my game, man, yeah. when you got the world's longest limos. You better not be an inch off, you know. <laughs> and the jet, we were a couple inches off. Couldn't get through some states. So we had police escorts get all the way through. MasterCard rented the Boeing jet for one month for $100,000 just to wrap it into a boat. A, a, a so they put MasterCard on Yeah, like a card. Oh, that's cool. And they go, that's, instead of going around the block, we'll take it around the world. And right. wrap a limousine in the... In the, in the um, uh, the shadow um, in the uh, shadow of September. In the shadow of September. <laughs> yes. And you just do the whole limousine. Like, you know, I got the limo ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's out in California. And in return, ready, 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 ready. she's going to show you how to jump out of a plane. <laughs> but uh, you said that uh, the, the ender skydiving is uh, from three years old to 103 years old. And you're not strapped on anything. You're free. That's but right. you're, you're, you're protected in there. So it's, there's no restriction. You the trust rest. them to make this video for you. Oh, you no, can no, certainly no, no, trust no, no, them no, no. with it. No, no, I would <laughs> never, ever, ever jump out of a plane. I let, let me tell you something. I have problems no matter what I do, ask my wife. If I go to a dentist, he's got his knee in my chest, opening the scar box with the pliers pulling out the tooth. How do I get these dentists? Because my told me he's a great dentist. Well, my, you're hanging at the bar all the time with another all the time, all the time. So every time I did something. I always had more of the gravy train to give me more problems. So I am so happy on ground floor. The only time I wanted to go up in the air a little is when my head gets blown up a little. Then all of a sudden I get, so my wife will go, oh. <laughs> well, wait, I have this program called, uh, you know, Jump for Stars. And these are for kids with and without disability, kids from poor oh, wow. or other cultures, you know. And what I'm trying to, to do with these kids is I bring them to indoor skydiving. And before we do it, uh, I, I, they talk to each other. We introduce each other. And the purpose of this long term in the future is that when their generation starts going to Mars 
and, and heavily uh, involved in space exploration. I don't want those kids with disabilities and poor to think that they can make equal contribution. So as an educator, I have started this and you provide the opportunity for these kids and they love to go to the indoor skydiving and they, they have so much fun. And it's also about science and math and yeah. technology. And so maybe one day I will invite you to just be with I the would kids. love to be with the yeah. kids. Yeah. That's what I would love. So I would love to play with the kids, be with the kids, be loud with the kids. You're, you're kind of like kids. a big kid. Yeah, I want a big yeah. kid. I want to be you're a babysitter. A <laughs> yeah. I love kids. That's very cool. So I did the last Jump for Stars in Munich. Yeah. And I'm planning on doing it in Utrecht, Netherlands. But I also do it in Tampa. So oh, be... <laughs> I said, wait a minute. My, my wife's from Germany. We're thinking about going there. Munich? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is she from done. Germany? Yeah. Oh, she, oh, she looks she? German. Yeah. yeah. She's, She's beautiful, beautiful by the way. Right. Thank you. We'll show a picture of her. She was three years old. Yes. Uh, yeah, when she, yeah, she was three when she came That's very cool. Her. So yeah. the film, Beyond the Shadow of September, one of the locations is in Munich. And when you see the, the conversations, it's so heavy and it's just so emotional what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. When I captured uh, the, uh, the Syrian uh, the protest against Bashar al-Assad, and Don is going to compose a very you know, special wow. soundtrack for that. And uh, awesome, it's, it's very special. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's really cool. Yeah. So I just finished the, the, London, awesome. the London one. It's also a, a very heavy conversation there because uh, it's about uh, slave trade. Uh, that uh, people are still, women are being sold as slaves still. to this day. And so I featured that in the film as well. And it's, uh, you know, and then the USA, we have a lot of conversations about gender equality, about 